many of my students from Trail 7 is here. So I want to remind everyone there's one more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> remind everyone what? There's a homework for you next week. And everything will be on exam. So the goal of today is to explain some kind of, uh, try to explain at least, uh, many roles. It's only in parentheses because I don't know how much I would be able to cover. Uh, roles, uh, curves play uh, um, in the geometry, in the study of uh, for geometry and topology of surfaces. Uh, in particular, we want to look at simple curves, uh, meaning curves does not intersect itself. We want to look at closed curves. Meaning these curves uh, is a loop that start and end as a single one. But I don't want to kind of restrict my attention only to those, although most of the talks will be on simple closed curves. Okay. So almost everything will be uh, relatively worked out in the case of the torus. And uh, uh, the case of other surfaces, which is the like, this is also true in, in other, for other surfaces. Okay, so I'm not sure if you have seen this before, but uh, this is the, what we call the square torus. So if you have a square in the plane, let's say of uh, side length one, you can identify opposite sides of this square then we, if you imagine what happens to what the shape what shape you get it's uh, kind of like a surface of a donut it's a pity we don't have donuts here but uh, just imagine uh, you glue top and uh, bottom, then get a cylinder, and then you glue the other two sides. So you have a tube, uh, like uh, the surface of a, uh, of a, of a doctor donut. So something like this. Uh, this is called the torus. So, if you just look at uh, this horizontal segment on, on the square, after you gluing, uh, after the gluing, the gluing of the left side and right side, this uh, this 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 horizontal segment becomes a closed loop. So it's a loop, say, look like something like this, and uh, a vertical loop, a vertical segment. This also glued together to be uh, to become a simple closed loop. Uh, it's just intersecting the red uh, red one at y unique point. So something like this. But there are other uh, there are other loops uh, on this uh, on this surface. Other simple closed geodesic on this surface. As a matter of fact, every simple closed geodesic is de determined by its uh, slope. Say, for example, I can look at this, <coughs> another different color. Let's look at this, uh, this segment. This segment will also glue up to become uh, a closed loop. And it intersects the green one at once, and intersects the, the red uh, curve once as well. So something like this. side and come back. 
and you can, as you can, well, so as you can see, you can draw a bit more of these, say, you can draw uh, segments of uh, slope 2. If I start at the origin, the, the, the segment of slope 2 will uh, reach this point. But this point is that identified with this point in this gluing procedure. So this segment will continue uh, up here, and then it comes back to the starting point. Ah, um, I should probably emphasize this point that I've got to say. The four edges, the four vertex of the, uh, of the, of the square is identified to one point. Anyway. <coughs> So now you have this uh, single closed loop that's uh, kind of wrapping around uh, uh, the red curve twice, but only intersect the, uh, the uh, green curve once. And this can be easily generalized uh, given any rational number you know, over Q. We have uh, uh, simple close, simple close curve on the cross. Okay. <coughs> we need rational number because we want it to return to the original point. If it's uh, not rational, that cannot happen. Here, the, red, the horizontal red curve has slope zero. This has slope zero. Uh, the vertical curve uh, has slope infinity. Uh, the, the, the yellow curve has uh, slope one, and the green curve has uh, well, blue curve has slope two. Right. So these are just some examples. <coughs> So then you immediately see um, uh, that the space, space of a simple closed curve on torus is identified with the rational numbers together with the pin. Well, I only really explain one direction, but the other direction is also true. I, I kind of explain any, uh, any rational number or infinity gives you a single closed curve. Just by drawing the set segments of that slope, the other direction is also true. It's uh, not uh, as easy to explain. And we often denote this by Q hat. <coughs> corresponds to rational points on this real line. Together as a point at a point at infinity. If you have ever taken complex analysis, uh, there's this construction of <coughs> adding one point at, at infinity to make the Riemann to make the complex plane compact. Uh, there's a point at infinity of the Riemann sphere. So if you think about this, if you have an infinite line, but if you add a point, you get a circle. So imagine there's also in both direction go off to one point on infinity. Just remember that point is up there. But on this real line, I have a bunch of point, uh, which are the rational points. Uh, and so on and so forth. These points corresponds to the single closed point. So, uh, if you have taken uh, real analysis, you know Q is dense uh, in R, uh, meaning any real number on the real line can be approximated by a sequence of uh, rational numbers. So it seems to, does not really make sense to just uh, to talk about these simple closed curves, 
if you are given a sequence of rational numbers approximating a certain uh, irrational number, say uh, any real number, uh, what does the geometric picture looks like on the on the torus? So. So suppose I have a segment of a slope uh, of slope uh, slightly larger than two. Uh, yeah. Well, slope slightly larger than two. Two point something something something. Then, if I start at this point, that segment will be over the, the blue, blue, blue line, right? So it will go slightly over the blue line. And then here, down here, and back to here. So after um, going uh, wrapping around twice in the vertical direction, it's not coming back to the original point, but rather slightly above the original point. Um, if the slope is actually a irrational number, this just always happens. It never really returns to the original point but rather just uh, getting closer and closer to that point after a, cer a certain amount of iteration. Uh, so, in the end, you have uh, a very dense looking uh, curve that kind of uh, becomes dense in the whole surface. But since it, it never comes back to the starting point, it never close up. But it also never intersects itself because all of these have the same slope, they're all parallel to each other. So instead of a simple closed curve, we have a simple curve that's just not closed. And uh, not closed. And sometimes this is called, uh, well, if you, if you take all such curves in the same direction of the same slope, that's, that can, that foliate uh, the, 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 the torus, so they are sometimes called uh, uh, foliation of the torus. Okay. So now, we start with simple closed curves. <coughs> We realize that they are just rational points on the real lines. We can com we, we can complete them. That's the process when you go from rational numbers to real numbers. You complete them, take the completion, and you get real real numbers. And then on the ge geometric side, uh, you can uh, not you're you're just not not just looking at uh, simple closed curves, but rough also uh, foliations. So, uh, so. Yeah, space of foliations uh, on the, uh, of the torus is uh, is just all together. Is which is R hat, and then it uh, nicely contains these simple close ones that uh, just uh, foliate the surface uh, as parallel, simple closed curves. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, you're welcome to ask any questions at any point. So. I have a question. Yeah. Does the foliation when it's a irrational number actually fill the square? So one leaf does not, but uh, so one, just one this segment does not, it's, it become dense, but it's not the whole, whole thing. Uh -huh. But you can take all possible um, uh, 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 curves in the same direction. The union of all of them, of course, uh, uh, fill out this whole surface. Similarly here, I kind of draw, I can choose different starting point. <clears throat> so for example, the whole torus 
is foliated by these simple closed curves that are just horizontal. So one simple closed curve does not, it's not even dense in the whole surface, but these families, they, they do. So that's why it's called foliation. Okay. So here's a, a slightly different, well, well, let me not go into that yet. Um, here's a slightly different uh, perspective. Uh, it's, it's okay, if you don't understand this, this is only for people who have taken algebra topology. Uh, so we all know, or everyone who's taking algebra topology know, the, the, uh, yeah, the, the fundamental group of the torus is the same as its first homology group in, uh, with the uh, integer coefficients, which is just V2. Um, and in some sense, this group is generated by two elements. It's generated by a horizontal curve and a vertical curve. So let me just denote uh, the horizontal curve by gamma zero and the uh, vertical curve by uh, gamma infinity, because those are the slopes of those, those two curves. <coughs> so what, does, what this means is you can choose a P and a Q, then P gamma zero, Q gamma infinity gives you an element uh, in this group. Uh, and this actually corresponds exactly to a curve of slope Q over P. So a different perspective uh, is that if I take uh, the first homology group, uh, they come in as pair of integers, and I take the take the ratio of them. I not, then I get all the possible simple closed curves because then I get the, the slope. So the, the process of taking ratio of a pair of numbers is something <coughs> called projectivization. So the projectivized first homology group is the same as uh, you had as well. <coughs> And the process of taking completion is merely replacing integer coefficients here with real coefficients. So instead of looking at this group, you're looking at H1, P of R. This is a vector space. Again, it has a basis uh, called uh, gamma zero gamma infinity. And uh, the Jacobization of the first homology group uh, is uh, that thing. Okay, so this is a slightly abstract nonsense uh, uh, point of view. But, okay, so an important thing to notice here is. Um, in this space, because I can tr choose a, a pair of integers p and q, different choices of p and q could have the same uh, ratio. For example, if I choose p and q, and then I choose 2p and 2q, those give me the same slope. Uh, but uh, it's sometimes worthwhile to, to view those things as different things. So another point of view is to think about the square, the square as uh, square pair of integers. Uh, as so-called multi-curves. So, um, so, uh, if, so, if you have a pair of integers, you can, you can, you can calculate its, uh, greatest common divisor. 
Uh, if this is 1, then I know that the, the original two things, or plus or minus 1, the two, uh, original two things are, well, greatest common divisor is always positive, sorry. So if the greatest common divisor is 1, we, we know the original two numbers are relatively prime. But if it's not, then, then I can write uh, each of these numbers as a multiple of n. And q over q is actually p prime over q. Oh, sorry, I should use q over p. That's uh, consistent with there. q over p equals q prime over p. So these two are actually the same curve because they have the same slope there. But this, uh, this pair of integers p and q has an extra information about uh, an integer n. So you can kind of view this as not just one copy of the curve, but n copy of the curve. So that's what multi-curve means. It's just a weighted copy, like a, a curve, simple closed curve with weight. So uh, in that uh, point of view, the first homology group is just a space of multi-curves. And uh, when you have a foliation together with a weight, sometimes that, that thing is called measured foliation. I just uh, all of these has its counterparts in uh, for other surfaces. So it is uh, now classical results that any surface, uh, a compact surface, can be classified by how many holes it has. So uh, the torus has one hole, so that's called genus one. And uh, you can draw surfaces with uh, more holes. And the number of holes completely determine the topological type of a surface. So this is genus 2. And genus 3. So we also have simple post, uh, simple post curves on these uh, surfaces. For example, I can draw some of them on this surface. A multi-curve. So it is possible uh, uh, to consider the space of okay. So the space of single closed curves. Let's say the space of well, this is just the space of, uh, of well, multi curves on a surface. Uh, 
we know this is q hat when g is just 1. But higher to next, it's more complicated. Um, we can, uh, we obviously also want some object, well, just looking at things like here, that, that kind, of, uh, kind of contains the, uh, this space. Uh, but uh, uh, is some, somehow complete. Okay. So, um, so to do that, let me uh, actually introduce. Well, it's fine. So to do that, um, uh, let me uh, just uh, look at things here. When you have a pair of uh, integers, you're looking at, uh, say, R2, and then you have uh, a pair of integers that gives you points Z2, other than 0, actually. So you have these let lattice points uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in R2. Okay. So they are not that. Uh, in R2. But if instead of uh, all of these, you also can consider all the possible uh, integer uh, uh, rational scale of them, then they will become dense. So instead, you're looking at uh, uh, Q squared. So Q squared will be dense uh, in R2. But uh, one thing to notice that when you pro pro projectilize D2 and Q2, it gives you the same thing because the ratio of two rational, rational numbers can also always be written as the ratio of two integers anyway. But uh, if you want something in completion, you have to go to the cube. So, uh, so there's another, uh, well, I don't know what the notation would be, let's say Q. There's another space, uh, is uh, the space of rational multi where these coefficients are expression. Okay. Okay. So obviously, uh, we want to find a space that's, uh, that contains this, and, and this is dense in it. That space is called uh, measured laminations. A uh, foliation, sorry. Space of measured on a surface of GSP. So what, what is that? Instead of just looking at simple Gauss curves, you look at uh, a curve that's simple but may not, it just may not uh, close, close up. There are some, yeah? I'm sorry. What's the difference between a rational multi-curve and just a multi-curve? So multi-curve usually means uh, these, uh, you assign an integer to it. Rational is just, just you assign a rational numbers to each curve. Right. Yeah, that, that's just the difference. OK. So you can think about uh, this rational uh, multi-curves as just uh, scale every uh, sorry multi curve by some fixed integer d, uh, and then take all the possible unions. These give you all the possible uh, different uh, denominators uh, in the coefficients. Anyway, it's not. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Uh, let me state it here. This is usually the first thing. Uh, the space of uh, measured foliations is uh, has dimension. 
what's uh, what's the point of doing everything uh, all of these? Uh, here's a not interesting application that actually has a very difficult. Um, so let's go back to the case of squared cars. And uh, each of these curves, simple closed curves, they are straight set line segment. You can define its length, it's just a natural length it has in the Euclidean metric. In, in fact, if it has slope p over q, then uh, its length is just p squared plus q squared. Uh, the reason being, instead of looking at this picture, we can look at, uh, well, say, uh, say this, uh, this, this curve of uh, slope 2, instead of uh, double, like back to here, we can just uh, draw a square up top and extend this curve here. And then this, two, this uh, curve that originally on this square is just two piece. Uh, it's, uh, it matches up to one piece with horizontal uh, uh, displacement one and vertical displacement two. So the total length of this will just be uh, squared. <coughs> so if I have a, 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 set, a, a single Gauss curve with slope p over q, where pq is relatively prime, then I know um, uh, it, it has length gamma p over q equals to p squared plus q squared um, taking square root p q then it's natural to define uh, the length if they are not relatively prime by just multiplying this because we are treating them as n copies of this curve so we just have to multiply the by n so here is a question sometimes the Circle problem. How many uh, pair of uh, integers uh, has less less than L uh, as L goes to infinity? So we're kind of uh, we don't really care about what exactly is this number, but uh, how, it's, how it behaves as L uh, get larger and larger. Okay. So, a different way of thinking about this question is look at look things here. These lattice points correspond exactly to the pair of integers. And uh, if we want to find those lengths, has, uh, th th those has lengths at most one, then we just draw the circle of radius one and count how many lattices points that are contained in that circle. If we want to find how many are within uh, uh, has at most x two, we just draw the circle of radius two and count how many points are contained in that disk. That is not, uh, well, that is, so let me just, uh, let's say this number, so number of uh, pq with uh, length of pq less than equal to l. This is the same as uh, v2 intersect with the disk of radius L. This is the number of points in here. So this is the uh, disk of radius L. But a different perspective is it is the same as if you scale these uh, integers by L and then intersect with B1. So you scale everything by L, and then if you want to find what happened before, originally how many there are in the disk of radius L, now you just look at how many there are in the, the disk of radius 1. So as you scale the lattice, these lattice become smaller, as, uh, these uh, uh, lattice become denser and denser. Uh, so uh, as a matter of fact, if you, if, you, if you look at the, uh, the 
radius, uh, this, uh, the disk of radius 1, when you scale by L, uh, these, uh, these lattice points just become denser and denser. And the number of lattice points inside here is roughly how many squares actually intersect your uh, disk. So, uh, so this is roughly, or at least up to some constant, how many uh, uh, small squares intersecting um, uh, intersecting uh, D1. So each small square has uh, area uh, 1 over L squared. So if I, I set this number to be an L, an L times 1 over L squared is roughly the portion that's covered by these small squares intersecting the, 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 the circle, the, the disk. And we all know this goes to the area of the disk as L goes to infinity. This, that, that's exactly how we get these areas in uh, multiple calculus, which my students will always see. Do these, uh, do, when you do integral, you always divide it into small pieces. This goes to the area of the disk, so which is pi. So you know as L is very large, then this number is roughly pi L squared. <coughs> so uh, generalizing this idea, Uh, woman to, uh, to, to get the fuse method. 
uh, with also the students of my advisor, but uh, I, I cannot say I would be compare. Okay. Right. So uh, just by thinking about these uh, curves, uh, simple curves, there's uh, uh, a lot of interesting things that can happen. For example, you obtain this asymptotic behavior of the number of uh, curves uh, with certain bands. <coughs> okay. Here's uh, a completely different topic. So as I've mentioned, when I try to draw these pictures, these curves will intersect each other. And you will realize on the, on the torus, any kind of curves intersect at least at one point. So they, they, you cannot draw two curves uh, that are not parallel to each other that doesn't intersect at least one point. For example, the horizontal, uh, the horizontal curve uh, and the vertical curve intersect at one point, while uh, the horizontal curve and uh, this intersect at two points. So since a curve is determined by slope, you would imagine there's a way to calculate how many intersections there are uh, just from the slope. Here is uh, uh, some, uh, some kind of uh, idea. So if I look at gamma zero and gamma infinity, I know it's the number of intersections is precisely uh, 1. So that's noted by i gamma 0 gamma infinity. Is just 1. Um, for some reason, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be apparent a bit later, or maybe not, but uh, you want to count these intersections in an oriented way. So if I orient the, the curve gamma zero in this direction and orient the vertical in this direction, then the intersection of gamma zero to gamma infinity uh, is a positive orientation. So uh, that's why we say this intersection is positive. In other words, if I look at gamma infinity and gamma zero, I just declare that to be negative. Okay, so I can now look at these slopes, say, at an, for an integer. So maybe this, uh, this slope is an integer uh, n, positive integer n. It's not hard to see that, uh, that the, the, a curve of that slope has to intersect the horizontal curve in n distinct uh, points. For example, these slope 2 intersect the horizontal curve in two points. If you draw, draw a slope of uh, a curve of slope three, then intersect uh, in three points, and they all intersect in the positive orientation. So uh, gamma uh, two, uh, gamma two, gamma uh, uh, zero. Oh, no, sorry, gamma, gamma zero, gamma two is two. Actually, gamma n just gives you that. So recall that gamma n, um, kind of write these as n gamma infinity. Uh, wait, as gamma zero, right? Because uh, you can kind of kind of view this going in the vertical direction twice and horizontal direction once. If I plug in here, and then just pretend this i is linear, that gives me gamma 0 and gamma infinity plus gamma 0, and i gamma 0 and gamma infinity plus i gamma 0, gamma 0. These curves does not intersect themselves, so this is 0, and this is uh, uh, n, if you pretend everything is linear. So you declare these two does match. So it's reasonable to conjecture that this gives you an inner product. Yeah. Uh, 
why, so why, I understand for integers why i and gamma 0, gamma n is n, but what about rationals? So rationals you can always clear the denominator and uh, we view that as some one over some rational numbers of uh, some integer multiple of stuff. Um, okay. So it is uh, actually a fact that this uh, intersection is an inner product on, uh, on D2. Uh, slash R2, actually. <clears throat> so now, uh, if we assume this, uh, the intersection of gamma P over Q and gamma P prime over Q prime uh, by writing this as, as Q, uh, P gamma infinity plus Q gamma zero, and this is P prime gamma infinity plus Q gamma prime zero. You know this is um, actually uh, the gamma. So this, this will give you Q P prime minus Q prime as it. Exactly the determinant of uh, the sorry. Uh, anyway, up to a sign, it's the uh, determinant of pq, p prime, p prime. So there's a sign issue somewhere, but the, let's ignore that. Plus or minus. So this actually suggests a different way of, of, of why this is true. Uh, one, this is uh, this this uh, this p over q p prime over q prime also gives you the uh, the, the the area of the parallelogram formed by these two uh, curves in these two directions. For example, uh, this is. Uh, 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 this uh, one over zero, uh, this is zero, this is two, and you can look, look at uh, this parallelogram, and that has area two. So since it has area two, it covers the torus twice, because the torus itself has just uh, uh, area one. So you expect there's actually another parallel copy right in the middle of, uh, of, the, of, this, uh, the, of the, this other curve. So, it, so, so uh, and in each of these uh, copies that has area 1, you count uh, uh, a certain number of uh, intersections. So that's why the intersection is exactly the same as, uh, as the area. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so now the question is, when do we have these uh, two simple, cur simple closed curves intersect exactly once. That's the minimal possible intersection of the uh, of a two single closed curve on the torus. So uh, we want to see when does two single closed curve actually intersect exactly once. So that's when we want this to be plus or minus one. Right? Uh, this tells you the intersection up to a sign, so we want this to be exactly one. Let me draw my real line again and uh, just uh, calculate certain things. First is what are the curves that intersect gamma zero uh, with uh, just one intersection? So any curve intersect gamma zero with just one intersection cannot wrap around in, uh, gamma infinity more than once. So it, it has to be curves like this. Which means uh, these are exactly uh, things with slope uh, one over n. So, yeah. uh, but similarly, well, this is plus one minus one. I don't want to kind of determine the sign yet. Uh, similarly, for anything to intersect 
get an infinity exactly once, it has to be uh, the integer. So, uh, in this picture, I want to draw an arc whenever the two uh, slope corresponds to two different curves that intersect exactly once. 